about flowering. This is a model of the inside of a flower. This is the anther. This is what produces male gamete. This is a fi the filament which supports the anther. This is the, the stigma, the place where the pollen lands. And this is the style which connects the stigma to the ovary. The ovary is the place where the female gamete is produced. And these are the oval, which are the little... Flowers may vary in shape, but they all have the same male and female reproductive organs. As we saw in the last video, this is the structure of the flower. I'm going to be talking about the reproductive system of flower and how flower is duplicated. The main parts involved in this here are the anther, which makes the male part of the plant, and the ovary here, which makes the female part of the plant. The male gametes are produced by the anther and the female gametes by the ovule. So, let's start with wind. Well, let's start with pollination, which is when this would be a grass plant here. So when the male part produces pollen, which will then get taken by the wind, catch on the carpel, which is the female part. This will this will be this will produce the conditions right that are right to create a new plant. Suitable adaptation is necessary for wind pollination. Another type of pollination is pollination by insects. This is where the insect goes into the flower to try and get the nectar at the bottom and ends up brushing off the anther, which collects pollen, which is then transferred to the next plant. That will brush off the stigma here and get into the ovaries, therefore making another plant. The structure of plants pollinated by insects will be different from those pollinated by wind. I'm going to talk about fertilisation. This is displayed in this diagram here. When the pollen hits the carpel up here, it creates a shoot to run down into the ovary. The male and female parts of the plant will connect in this to make an egg and a zygote. This, will, this case in here, the ovule, will protect this egg from the harsh conditions of the outside world. And that ovule is contained inside of the ovary. The male and female gametes fuse to form an embryo, and the embryo becomes a zygote, which then becomes a seed. Next we're going to talk about seed and fruit formation. This is once this process has happened, the ovary will swell and it will form a fruit or a seed. This then gets dispersed by different, by different means. But all seeds are common in one way, that they will all have a root, a radical, a testa to protect it, and a plume where the radical meets the testa. And the food supply just keeps the seed alive until it reaches soil. Next we're going to be talking about seed and fruit dispersal. This is how seeds and fruit get from where their parent plant is to other grounds to stop, stop them competing with their parents for, for food, for resources and for just area really, space. For one method is by wind, which is like damp vines that, have, that, when they do, that when they pollinate they form small fluffy things which blow away in the wind and are carried miles before landing to perform another one. To, perform, to make another plant. Another form is by animals, where the animals eat the plant, or the plant such as the plant such as the sort of sticky grass that you might find on farms. It can either get stuck to the animal, or certain berries get eaten by the animal and excreted to drop them on the ground with nutrients around them. 
Other plants just stick together and fall off when they're ready to start. Now I'm going to talk about water. This is like coconuts and water lilies. Water lilies just float off in the pond. Their seeds float away and they find a new part of the pond where they grow. Coconuts fall into the ocean. This then, this then gets caught by a current, current and this current will flow to other islands or other lands to make a new coconut tree. And the last one I'm going to talk about is by themselves, such as peas. They have pods that the peas inside them grow so much, eventually the pods will rupture and explode. This, this will let the peas out and the peas will form new plants on the ground. Now the final step in becoming a new plant is germination, which is displayed in this diagram here. For germination to occur, seeds need oxygen, moisture, usually water, and the right temperature. Seeds will start out as they used to be in the air. They'll land on the ground and they'll find, and they'll find their way just below the soil level. So this, this radical here will become the new root, which will root the plant to the ground. The root will develop and grow, and as the food supply is worn away, it will start to rupture and crack to let the, to let the soil in towards the in towards the plant. This will then split completely, and a young shoot will pop out with its first signs of leaves or photosynthesized material forming. And this and the seed coat will then silt, which will, which will dissolve and the root will grow deeper. Finally, the plant will reach the surface and it will shoot out smaller roots to connect moisture and materials called lateral roots. This plant will now be able to support itself and it will be big enough to compete with other plants. Thank you. In conclusion, plants have a complex system of reproduction involving the following. Pollination, when pollen is transferred from the stamen to the carpal. Fertilization is Dispersal of seeds are when the